the Open Day is a virtual program organized for women to learn about how to leverage technology for their career and business growth. And today we have a lineup of African women in tech that will be sharing their personal experiences. They will speak about the career paths in tech and help you to realize the importance of acquiring these digital skills. You'll also be learning about all the Women Texas program activities for this year. So get ready to receive answers to all your many questions. Um, shortly, we'll be having a fireside, fireside conversation between Jun Siobia. Jun Siobia is the CEO of Bayless Group Kenya. We'll be also having um, Confidence Stably. She's a cybersecurity specialist and the founder of CyberSafe Foundation Nigeria. Jessica Uwogiren is a data analytics consultant and she's a co-founder of Data Tech Space. And this session will be uh, moderated by Dora Oladipo, executive director of Tech for Dev. She was the person that gave the welcome address and the session will begin right away. So stay tuned and enjoy your time. Oh, so thank you very much, Joy. Uh, so I would just start out by just reading a brief bio just for everyone to know who are, are going to be on our panel today, the people who are going to be on our panel today, the seasoned uh, experts, women, who are going to be on our panel today. So I'll just go real quickly. So June is a tech enthusiast and has a passion for coming up with innovations that will change and improve systems in Africa. She's currently the CEO of Bayless Group, a company that provides creative digital advertising and technology solutions for businesses in the region. She's been selected as a Forbes 30 under 30 achiever. Trust me guys, this is a big deal. And Forbes most promising entrepreneurs in Africa 2018. June also runs a high impact agricultural solution. She has received global recognition, including the Global Student Entrepreneur Award in 2017 and CEO Global's Regional and Country SME winner. She previously co-founded a social enterprise that led her to being named as a top 40 under 40 woman by Business Daily Africa in 2015 and Most Influential Kenyans 2016. So Jessica is a data analyst and a machine learning enthusiast, passionate about data science and analytics. She has a background in chemical engineering with a bachelor's degree from Covenant University and master's degree from Institute of Petroleum Studies. She has over four years of experience in energy and manufacturing industries, working as a process engineer in companies like General Electric and Seplat Petroleum. In 2020, she decided to transition into data analytics full-time. She did this by using online learning resources and building pet projects. She's currently, she currently does freelance consulting on data-related projects and is the founder of Data Tech Space, a free online community for individuals in data science and analytics. She also enjoys writing about data analytics projects and publishes them regularly on a renowned publication called Towards Data Science. Our main goal is to provide data-driven solutions to real-world problems and simplify the data journey for aspiring data analysts and scientists. All right, you're welcome, jo um, you're welcome, Jessica, rather. All right, so we have confidence, right? Confidence is a cybersecurity professional, cybersecurity awareness advocate, a global shaper, author, and entrepreneur with over a decade's worth of experience in technology. A wealth of experience garnered across diverse sectors, including consulting, education, banking, and government, as distinguished uh, as a leading female voice in the African technological space. Confidence is a top woman in Cybersecurity Africa 2020 finalist, Young CS, CISO of the Year Award 2021 nominee, BBC Biz 100 expert, and an external faculty of the FinTech Institute that's located in Lagos, London, and Toronto. An acknowledgement of her professionalism, influence, and expertise within the African tech ecosystem. She contributes to social responsibility through CyberSafe Foundation. Its, flag its flagship initiative, rather, no go for MAGA is, com is combating digital fraud penetrated through social engineering by delivering simple, relatable cybersecurity education across Nigeria and beyond. She's also authored Africa's first storified cybersecurity awareness book, No Go for MAGA, the handbook. CyberSafe Foundation has recently become a cybersecurity partner of the UK government in Nigeria. You're welcome, Confidence, and I'm so delighted to have June, to have Confidence, and to have Jessica here with us. Thank you so much, Deborah. I'm so excited to be here as well. Thank you, Confidence. Our June? Can you take a minute for me to unmute, for me to turn on my video? 
Oh, that would be fun. Please, our, the host, can you help with our confidences video? I think um, Jessica is here as well. And June is here as well. Hi, hi, everyone. Hi, Jessica. All right, so we have Jessica's video on. We're le- okay, confidences video is right on as well. Then I think we're left with uh, June. Okay, do we have June's video right up? June, are you there? Okay, I saw June a few seconds ago, and I know she's still Hello, here. Hello, I'm here. I'm okay. here. Hi, June. Uh, hi, June. Hello, hi, hi. And hi, Jessica. Uh, so just to give you guys, everyone else on the call, so just like a brief background is, these are exceptional women moving waves in technology across the continent. And it is a pleasure to have all of them on the call. So they're just sharing from their wealth of experience on being women in technology. And I mean, we would also have uh, an opportunity to ask questions. Just write, I will prompt everyone so you can drop the, your questions in the comment section just right before we wrap up the fireside chat. But once again, uh, welcome June, welcome Jessica, and welcome Confidence. So I will start out with uh, June, right? So June, you've been listed as, I mean, I read your bio and I was amazed and wowed. I mean, and I like I told, like I told everyone else on the call, is it's a big deal to be a Forbes 30 under 30, right? So you're one of the Forbes 30 under 30, you're a CEO, you're a woman CEO in tech, uh, not a very, uh, it's not a fit that you see very often in the technology space owing to the fact that a lot of businesses and organizations within the technology space are championed and being run by men. And you received several awards, I mean, which, which I find very, um, very interesting and amazing. And I think the very first question for me will be, these are interesting feats, these are interesting successes right how were you able to achieve this as a woman in tech and maybe perhaps along those lines as well will be it will be great to hear what are most valuable lessons you have to share with other women who are on the call today around being a ceo of a tech enabled business as a woman hello everyone so um on your first question uh the awards, how I got the awards, okay. So I got my first award when I was 20 years old. Age has never been a deterrent to my growth or how I do things. So from the beginning, the first award I got was out of a social impact organization that I had started. I had co-founded with another, with another team. And the awards are great because the recognition tends to give us credibility, it tends to give me and my team credibility on the work that we do. And I think it was a triple, a, a triple effect that when I got, when, when, cause after the social impact, after running the social impact business, I later on started Bayless Group, which is the company that I'm running now, that turned five years actually last year. And as, as, as an entrepreneur, I have learned a lot throughout the five year journey of running a tech company. So it, 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 it all started when in my in my compass room and that's the first thing that i want to tell guys that when you are when you want to start a tech company the only thing you need is your laptop or your phone or internet and you need to start with what you have which is very very important and you need to learn fast because as as when I started the tech company, I started economics, but I love economics. So I didn't have prior tech knowledge. So I had to learn online. So I had to learn fast. And the only way I got to learn my skills, because I learned how to code through YouTube, through researching um, different articles. I learned, I learned how to create websites, how to design. And I just needed to learn those skills for myself. And then later on, I incorporated other guys, I employed other people to work with me. So my first point is learn fast. That's a very valuable, valuable insight when you're running a business because it, technology tends to change. And if you don't innovate, then your company will die. So learn fast, go with the trends, keep on reading, keep on researching what's happening in the tech industry. How can I do things differently? 
And then the second thing is be flexible with your strategy because you may start a business a certain way and then over the over the over time things change and then you're like okay I want to change the direction of the business. If you wrote your business plan in the beginning and you decide to stick by your business plan, then your company might end up dying because you will start to stick with your business plan yet things have already changed maybe your customers interests have already changed and then you're not able to grow your company because you're not changing your strategy so change your strategy be flexible it's easy, it's easier to change things when you're a small startup than when you're a big corporation so take advantage of 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 change, changing your strategy on the go and then the third thing is you need to understand what your product is and your product needs to tie down to the consumer because you may start a company and think that people need a tech business and then you think people need your product but actually people don't don't need it your your product may be amazing but the approach that you're taking doesn't work because you haven't consulted the, your 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 users so talk to your users talk to your users in whatever field you you're getting into so those are the three very valuable lessons that I'd like to tell guys because you might also want to start a tech company to raise money and that may not go your way so bootstrap in the beginning bootstrap that's very important bootstrap or use your own money or even in the because me I didn't need me to use any money in the beginning because I literally just needed to just find clients so understand what your business is before you get into it oh wow i mean this is a very valuable i just took like several notes myself just writing down like the tips that you've shared you mentioned that the importance of learning fast and i find it very exciting you know talking about your journey and how you learn how you self learn uh there's a lot of people have like the opportunity to learn some people do not want to learn for several reasons but the fact that you find uh someone like you who decided to self learn right they didn't have like it wasn't like someone threw them a cookie and said oh come learn about this but you were passionate about what you wanted to do you knew what you wanted to do and you went for it it totally awesome and commendable and i'm sure that the women on the chat will have amazing questions to ask around especially women who are interested in starting um in starting like a tech business or a tech enabled business sort of might have questions around um how to start really right i don't have any background for example in technology and i have an interest in running that a tech company or a tech startup which is really weird cuz you're like people you have conversations with people and you're like oh i want to start a tech company but you're like but oh, you don't even know how to code so how do you even want to start a tech company but we find but your insights that you've shared are extremely valuable and um i'm sure that would get many more questions uh, from the people within the audience um shortly but let me move over quickly to and I'll be back to you because I have a couple more questions for you but I'll move over quickly to uh confidence so um hi confidence hi <laughs> hi hi confidence nice to have you uh on the other side uh just my very first question to you will be i mean I've seen a lot of the wonderful work you're doing with like the UK government and No For Maga is an amazing um campaign that is just been driven. I mean, if anybody hasn't like if you're not following um CyberSafe Foundation, I would really advise you to do follow them cuz they are sharing like very insightful tips around cybersecurity awareness, which I find very exciting because they it's like broken down to like literally anybody can understand the content it's not difficult and it just talks about the kind of world that people find themselves falling into uh, around like cyber security crimes and all of that but what is interesting to note here will be cyber security is one of the if you check like any ranking like across the world around on demand skills on demand tech skills or on demand skills for the year 2021 cyber security is like one of the top 5 across board right okay. but the yeah. interesting thing is you don't find a lot of women venturing into cyber security and let me give you an example tech for dev run a program earlier last year uh with GIZ and we had one of the tracks that we, that we that were teaching people on was cyber security in that class that was the only track that had all male no female at all nobody signed up to want to be a part of the cyber security track so i'm like there it's a field with immense opportunities but women are not looking in that direction there are few women looking into tech 
but there are even fewer women looking into cybersecurity as uh, a career path, right? So it will be interesting to know what influenced your decision to um, venture into cybersecurity. Like I said, seeing that a lot of women are not, uh, that's not their first point of call when they think about a career in tech. Exactly. I agree with you very much. And thank you so much, June, for that very amazing uh, background you've given us all to speak of uh, from. So I, I'll be very honest, guys. Let's just just because this is exactly how I talk. I doubled into cyber security by mistake. I was just trying to prove a point. But after proving the point, I got stopped because I loved it. And I think that's one of the key things I want to say. Um, don't be afraid of challenges embrace challenges because that's what makes you the diamond that you really are you're right now diamond in the rough but trust me if you embrace challenges the rewards are in, um, are immense the satisfaction is also there you know and then you get to grow so challenges was the reason i doubled into cyber security sorry looking for a challenge so it was in my msc um i think that was nine years ago i you know i i i came into school and I was literally doing like IT um, information system. So it was sort of like a, con a continuation of my first degree. So I was like, oh, all the whole modules were like, it was like going from primary school to secondary school, you're doing about the same thing. Or uh, maybe you get, so it felt too familiar for me. Anyone who knows me, like I get bored with things if they're not challenging. So I was like, no, I need to find something that's challenging. And so we had this module that were choices that were you know placed before us. And I just said, oh, this one, I don't know what it, what it is. It was cryptography. You know, what is it like? And then my colleagues were discouraging me. Oh, you know what? It's so tough. In fact, it's for engineering students because then we should share the same faculty with engineering students in my school. So I'm like, no, 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 it's for engineering students. You know, that, what, that particular module is so tough. It's so, I said, eh, it's tough. What is there in that module? Let me go and see, <laughs> Let me go and see the module. Eh? Let me go and experience it and, you know, see for myself. So it was in trying to challenge myself that I doubled in cyber security and you know to be very honest with you it was tough so um initially I think that was the only module I had a B in in my master's I still came out with the first class though you know but at the end of the day that was tough to come into but it you know I stayed in because I loved the challenge I loved the experiences I formed bonds and that's another key thing I want, I want to share here Relationships are a great part of succeeding in in, um, in tech. Don't just come in contact with people only for the knowledge at that time or what they can give you at that time. You know, always see yourself from the two angles of value. How can you be of value to the person in the next 10 years? How can that person be of value to you? And to circle back, now this is 10 years after my my faculty, my uh, my lecturer at the time for that particular module that I ran into and was the start of my cybersecurity career has progressed to be the head of Wolverhampton's uh, Wolverhampton in the UK and has it's progressed to be the head of the research and the you know the investing for cybersecurity there right now. So he moved recently from being cybersecurity only and the research institute heading the research institute to become the head of academics. So you see he's, he's still doing massive work in cybersecurity and because of that relationship we formed we share notes i mean i get insights in fact i am literally i am literally will i say uh, my growth is fast tracked by having that relationship and keeping it and it's very important to know that as women you'll be you'll be what's that word again you'll be guest so you, are, you should be ready to work really hard because the people who are second guessing you will be the ones washing your feet when you can show them that you're very knowledgeable. So stay hungry for knowledge, be voracious about knowledge because everybody that you come in contact with wants you to prove a point. Whether or not you accept it, that's actually going to be your reality. And so in those times where, where, where you know, people are questioning, okay, is she really qualified? That's the time where you have to put your shoulder pads on by showing them that you're very knowledgeable. I know I use this analogy a lot. You have to show them you're very knowledgeable. And Another key is to stay very visible. I mean, as women, we can we can be tempted to, you know, be very humble about our achievements. You know, I just it's just something I did on the corner. No, no, men are not humble about that. In fact, men attack opportunities even when they are not qualified for them. But you know, we stay humble. We still let's just stay content. No. 
go for what you want to go for and when you win even your little wins talk about your little wins you have just learned how to code in html talk about how you learned what was your difficulty there how you 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 know you overcame it speak about the work you're doing in your little space in your little things because you know what you're doing you're selling yourself every single time leverage linkedin a whole lot and if there's anybody here who doesn't have a linkedin profile please don't talk to me after this event <laughs> jessica is saying you know how to do Please, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, please don't talk to us. <laughs> Open more right now. That's what Jessica is saying. Open more right now because that is where people who are serious about growing their careers, about staying visible to the people who are important, that is where they are. So yes, you can have an Instagram account. I have one myself. You can have a Facebook account, but be serious about your LinkedIn. Open one and begin to grow. As you're learning about tech, you're talking about what you're learning, and you help you begin to access help that you know. You never would have thought possible. So I know I've got shot, you know, in my answer. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope I've been able to. I don't know when the circle is going to get back to me. I've been able to touch a couple of, of points that you know helped me in my career. How I dabbled into cybersecurity and how I have grown. Wow, amazing point, confidence. I mean, I'm just like. There's so much insight coming today. Like I'm just like literally just jotting it away, having an amazing time, just taking point. But I just want to drill in just a little bit on what you mentioned around going for what you want, and just maybe a little bit of statistics around this, at least from our experience running type different programs um, in tech for them. It, you're very right when it comes to the fact that women are not natural pushers. Women are not. We tend to always shy back. And we tend to always want to take a back seat. So an example is another program that we did run last year, which was a combination of men and women who are supposed to be signing up for those for the training. We had about in the applications, we had about 70% of men apply and about 30% of women apply. And when we ask, ask questions like, oh, where did you get information from around the program? A lot more of the women came up with like, oh, I heard from my brother or my uncle or my husband. And it showed that even the information that came to the women, a bulk of the information came from the men, right? And you naturally have a lot of times when, when we get inquiries within the organization on people saying, oh, I want to learn how to code or I want my wife or my sister to become a product manager. They are coming from men. They're not coming from women actually asking those questions. So you're extremely right about women not being natural pushers. And it is super important, right? This is a field or this is an industry that is dominated by men right everywhere you look left right and center there are men like literally everywhere men are the bulk of the developers men are the bulk of the cyber security experts they're the bulk of the artificial intelligence engineers coming to jessica really shortly and it is just important to push through go for what you want i mean confidence has so many salient points i'm like if i touch on everything i'm going to take over this conversation so i'm just going to be quiet a bit and just move over really quickly to uh jessica thank you so much confidence i'll circle back to you shortly so uh hi jessica hi jessica it's okay jessica. okay um yeah i'm here i'm um, sorry you, you guys need to unmute me hi uh, okay hi jessica nice to have you here so yeah, um, same here. amazing bio, right? Uh, it is, this is what, when I read your bio, I was amazed because like just very similar to confidence, there are very few women, I mean, extremely few women who are in data science or have any ties to either machine learning or artificial intelligence. I mean, this is a rapidly growing, growing field and it's sort of like the, if you permit me to use the word, I know this is very Nigerian, but I would say cream de la cream of like the of like the technology uh, industry. Uh, right? It's a growing field where um, it's just there's just a lot going on in terms of teaching systems to um, to learn, right? And it's interesting to see that you have an engineering background, uh, but it will be it will be it will be quite interesting for us to know how you moved or what what made you make that decision to move from core engineering to uh, data science, machine learning. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to apologize first. Uh, I like to talk a lot. And <laughs> I've seen that like, confidence likes to talk as well. I've seen June likes to talk as well. So that's very good. Um, so just in case I will issue my time, just send me a message, I'll stop. Um, so thank you so much for this. Um, I will, you saw me smiling and smiling when confidence was talking. I was, I was like, she has said, 
basically everything I probably had to say. But um, talking about my engineering background, um, I'll probably start from there. How did I get into engineering, first of all? Um, back in secondary school, um, SS1, SS2 science class, and at that point in time, my parents were in the medical field. So the, the ideal thing was for me to go into medicine, right? By going into SS2, SS3, um, I, I said I said to myself, I didn't like biology, so there was no point. I already knew I was going to do it. And then um, something like called Tech for Dev does, I attended a program in my SS2 because they took the two best students in school then um, to attend that program. It was called Vision 2020 by Lona Dex. And they introduced us to engineering, um, oil and gas. And I was amazed. I was like, I saw I, there was this woman, Anita Moyle. Um, she owns DBSL now. She runs the company. She talked about her engineering background and how she was making so much money in oil and gas. And I was like, I'm definitely going to get into oil and gas. So going to university, I said, oh, let me do engineering. My dad keeps, keeps engaged with it. He told me, um, um, my, my Nigerian name is Osas. He says, Osas, that I can't do engineering because um, it's something for men. That why would I want to go into something that will fail at? And I didn't even feel my jam form. I wasn't going to change it. So I went ahead. The highest you do, you won't pay my school fees. I'll find someone else on my school fees. It did. And funny enough, right now, if it was my dad's phone, my name is third as the engineer. Um, that's the working, and, that's my... <laughs> and I laugh. I'm like, you want to remember that. So um, for me, that's how it started. And engineering is a field omitted by men. Everybody knows that. Um, in my class, we we're probably like 70, 20, um, 70, 30 in terms of percentage. So 70 being men, 30 being ladies. Um, in some cases, it was worse. It was like 90% um, than 10%. Um, so I was already used to that environment and trying to dominate. I came out as best student in my school. That's not um, an attribute to success in life. Just know that it's not, it's not by having just a class. There are people that have to a class in university and are doing great in tech. Um, so basically, I had that history of working with men. Even when I get, got into oil and gas, the different companies I worked in, I worked in three companies in Nigeria before coming here to Canada. It was all men. There were times I was offshore, I was the only lady out of 100 men. So I was already used to that. So maybe that would probably have helped me navigate in the tech field. Then how did I move into data science? Last year, um, I said to myself, um, I had known a lot of people that had done it, right? Um, moved, changed careers like that. Um, but it, 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 it's tough when you've done four years in a particular field and then you just want to change suddenly. It doesn't just happen overnight. So what did I do? I had to take time to study people that had done this thing. I um, looked at, I saw people's LinkedIn profile a lot. So when, when um, companies were talking about LinkedIn, I was just smiling. I will, I will now come and ask you, I will stop your profile. Oh, what did this person do? Is a senior data scientist in Apple? Is a senior data scientist in Google? What did he do to get there? Um, some of the online courses I did, it was from stalking people's LinkedIn profile. I'll see people come to LinkedIn, ah, I finished the certification. So the first one I did was IBM data science. Um, that was the first certification I did. That, that, that certification was meant to take 10 months. So if you go to Coursera, you see it, take, it takes 10 months to complete. I finished that certification in three months. Why, why did I do that? I was passionate about it. I got into it and I was like, wow, so this is what I'm missing out all this while. Secondly, it was paid. Um, I had to pay $50 every month. And I was like, so obviously, the faster I finish this thing, the better it will be for me to save my money. So um, I did that certification in three months. I had to pay projects after. That was my first project. Um, just similar to what Confidence has said, when I did that project, I showed my friends, um, which is another thing I'll touch on. I showed my friends, they liked it. Um, they were like, oh, it's can add some things to it and to improve like the quality of your work because one thing about me i don't like mediocre work um i would um in, in the community i run data tech space i tell them all the time if you guys are going to put out any project please bring it for us to review first before you put it out because if you tell me to retweet the project or to praise it for you outside i won't do it if i see it's mediocre so let people review it first before you put it out there so that first project i really i didn't really publicize it i just maybe put it in a few whatsapp groups yeah i did this project look at this but i got a lot tons of feedback about this and that kind of gave me a boost um so when it comes to women moving into tech spaces i understand that imposter syndrome that's what they call it where you're scared you're not so confident of the skills you have so what i would say is just take that leap dive into it because um once you do you will know that there's no going back from it so um that first project i saw it got a lot of traction so i was like oh let me just do a second one just to prove to myself that this thing wasn't um a faux pas it wasn't um just me dabbling into it so i went on thought of my second project i talked about it in the last conference i was in how i did that project and december i told myself linkedin or twitter or what else instagram 
it was everywhere. Tons of feedback. I think that was kind of the project that launched me into data science, and people are saying, "Sorry, saying this is what um, you know, this is what this girl is about." So um, for me, that really helped a lot. So leveraging online resources helped me. Stalking people on LinkedIn. I'm not saying go and stalk people, but the thing about it is, um, look at what people have done before. You have four amazing women um, on this panel. I've learned a lot from confidence speaking. I've learned a lot from June speaking. Um, Look at what they've done. You want to get into cybersecurity. Look at the path that um, confidence took to get into that space and how she's top in her field now. Look at the path that June took to get into um, building her own business from scratch. So those things really help a lot. That's what our advice. LinkedIn branding helps a lot, too, guys. Ha. Hmm. I'm probably saying too much, but I think we'll come back to this. But branding also uh, helps. So you can have fantastic work like i said i don't like mediocre work so I, anything i put out i make sure it's top quality how do i make sure it's top quality i give people to review it for me so um make sure what you're putting out there is top quality don't put out mediocre work people will be like oh, what's this person about but what i'm saying is you might i'm not saying just make it perfect first just put it out there but make sure people have reviewed it then you have that confidence to go in go all in um branding helps a lot i have a website i have a video website within making a day in five hours uh that i can i can talk about it another day but that that also helped a lot to showcase the work i do to showcase the community i run um we're building one for data tech space that is, that's um launching on monday um i've also helped my brother who is also a tech person um he does ui ux build his own website and <laughs> he's swimming in referrals he's swimming in money just under two weeks of launching that website so Branding also helps a lot, putting yourself out there, making people see your work. So I'll stop here for now. My name is Jessica again. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Jessica. Interesting insight. Uh, I, I, I saw some of the comments around tech projects being important. I mean, if you're just, if you're like an early starter, you're just learning, I mean, it's very important to you, for you to be able to uh, have some tech projects you're doing on the site just that is available for easy showcase, right? So if you're having a conversation with someone and for example, you're looking for a job in tech and they're like, oh, what have you done before, right? One of the first things is you can bring out that tech project and say, oh, this is what I'm currently doing. I've done five of this. And these are like the different um, areas that I've done these five things in. It really helps. Um, I, I can say that for sure that it does really help. I, I know that because that's one of the questions I also ask people when they're like, oh, I'm looking for a job as a software engineer. I'm like, what have you done before? Or I'm looking for a job as a UI UX or a product designer. I'm like, what have you done before? Do you have a creative background? Is there anything I can see, some sort of portfolio that can show me that you know you, you have an idea of what to do? So I'm very extremely aligned on the conversation around having pet projects. You did also mention something interesting around taking a leap. I mean, very similar to what Confidence said around the fact that women typically have, like you said, imposter syndrome and you just want to always take that back seat because you feel like, ah, I might just not be qualified enough. The person next to me might be better than me. There was a recent statistic that I was not quite recent, though. Sometime last year, uh, 2020, 2019, I read up an article. I can't quite even remember the report. I read it in that said something around this was looking at statistics at workplaces, right? Where if you put out an advertisement for a new role within an organization and you're and you're asking people within that organization to apply, the statistics show that a bunch of the, like 80% or 90% of a very high percentage of men would apply for that role before the women in the same organization apply. Because women are like, ah, oh, just maybe they're not gonna consider me, but men are they don't think twice. They're just like, they want it, they go for it. They see it, it's what they want, they go for it. And for us to be able to achieve the kind of ratio that we're looking for to achieve in the technology ecosystem, it's very, very important that we're able to take that back. We are, we're supposed to be able to not think about being an imposter. You have everything that it takes and you can just absolutely go for it. Lastly, that I jotted down was about the branding, when you mentioned that branding does help a lot. I mean, I'm sure that June can talk can talk for ages around the importance of branding because that's what our organization is really focused on. They're like a digital marketing organization, just focused on branding, web design, you know, and hosting and all of that. So coming certainly back to June, thank you so much, Jessica. I'll circle back to you right shortly. Uh, circling back to June, right? Um, but I think that this is something that I'd always thought about and I thought that would be interesting to ask. Hi, June. Hello. Okay. 
uh, just something that I thought would be interesting to ask. So going back to uh, the very first comment I made when uh, I was doing the, when I was asking the first question around having women in um, women in leadership positions or women in uh, at the helm of affairs of running a business, a technology business, either a technology, a core tech business or a core or uh, a tech enabled business. I think um, what would be interesting for women here to note will be what kind of challenges have you faced as a woman leading a technology organization or a technology business and what can what can women who aspire to also run a business in technology what can they do to avoid like pitfalls or to ensure that they're not reinventing the wheel and they can learn from like your your experience thus far So, w- one of the challenges that I faced, I faced when I started at Bayless Group, I was 21 years old. So, I'd get into boardrooms to pitch uh, a strategy for a particular marketing campaign or to pitch how we're going to create this app. And everyone in the boardroom, since they're way older than me, they'd ask me, How old are you? Uh, what ro- what's your position in the company? And I'd go, like, I'm the CEO. I'm, I'm, I'm the marketing lead and I am the one giving you these ideas and, and the, the ideas would be brilliant and what got me into the door was just the fact that I had that confidence. As a woman, there's a research by by Zenga, I think. He says that women are often way better leaders than men and I always believe that me being a woman has never ever like reduced my worth of being a woman CEO or a woman leader in an organization. So I that I, I strongly believe because I enter into boardrooms, I pitch, I uh, go into high level meetings, high level events and pitch pitch who I am and what we do as a company without thinking that because I'm a woman they're gonna just think a certain way about me. So it's 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 very, very important as a woman in tech not to think that just because I'm a woman that people are not going to buy my product or when I go to meetings with investors, they're not going to, you know, uh, take me in just because I'm a woman. Women are really, really good leaders. And there's so many call of applications for women and there's so many opportunities for women in tech. And the fact that we don't we don't take them, that we stand back and you're like, ah, no, you know, let me just do something, something, you know, normal, like let me start a salon or let me, let me do start a clothes business because that's what you know us women do no look at confidence look at jessica you know they, they've gotten that deep into 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 tech and they're women and there's so many opportunities that they're gonna get just because of the skills that they have gotten in the field so it's it's really really important for us not to not to undervalue ourselves and one of the things that actually even made me stand out is the fact that i would speak in confidence even though that which one year old right now I'm 26 but even as a 21 year old I, I would speak very confidently about what I do very confidently about what my company does the ability of my team to deliver certain projects and that's what even got us like you know uh, huge projects that because people would even buy into the company because they believe in me not me as a woman but me and the capability of things that I can be able to do so get into it don't be afraid that's so many opportunities for women ah there's so many and we need to take advantage of them because if you fall back who are gonna who are, who's going to take this uh, this opportunity so yeah that's that's something that i'd, I'd really like you know push as a woman go for it don't don't be don't be put down because of your gender oh, wonderful thank you so much june i mean if there's anything you're gonna take out of this guys it's just Confidence is key, right? And when we have confidence on the call, the call as well. So confidence also is gonna tell us about how to be confident as a woman. But thank you so much, June. I mean, if there's anything you're taking out of this is confidence is key. If you can walk into that boardroom, you can walk into that conversation with anyone as long as you have your shoulders up high, your your you're standing, you're standing straight, you're not sloping, you're you you just have that posture of confidence and you're just walking into a room and you're ready to take over the world, like you can literally do anything. So thank you so much, June. I'm moving on really quickly because uh, of time. Uh, I will load confidence with like a three in one question all at once and so that I don't, so that, so just because of time. So uh, back to you, confidence. Um, I mean, 
it's very interesting, like I said, to see how, you know, you have limited women in cybersecurity. Uh, so my first part question, there are three parts. The first part question will be to hear you share about what kind of career opportunities exist in cybersecurity. A lot of people just know cybersecurity like, as a field. They don't know why it exists there. They don't know what they can do. Some people, I've seen a couple of comments in the section saying, oh, I like cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is great. I'm like, okay, there are like numerous career options in cybersecurity, right? So what should we be? If I, if I want to start up my career in cybersecurity, for example, what should I be, what, what should I be looking at? I'm not, I mean, just ideas around what different career paths exist. Secondly, is that um, I wanted to also touch on what the common misconceptions that people have, not people, women, have um, in technology. Like, people, women want to join like the tech industry, they want to partake in tech industry, but there are a lot of misconceptions flying in the air around women being partakers in the industry and it would be nice that you that you can share with us just some of these common misconceptions and how women can go above these misconceptions and then the last prong of it is that i know that you're a mom to an handsome young man uh, and, as a, <laughs> and as a woman as a woman and as a woman in tech and the reason i'm saying as a woman in tech is because the technology space is known to be a very sort of rigorous industry right where there's a lot of time commitment that is given towards the work that, that you do either you're coding or you're, you're, you're develop or you're a developer or a cyber security specialist there's a lot of time that goes into that so how do you juggle i know that there might be some people in the audience today who are mothers who are thinking i have a i have a key i have two kids i have three kids uh this tech everybody's talking about sounds exciting but how do i juggle my life as a mother and as a woman in tech so it'll be nice to just hear your thoughts around this sort of like three prong question real quick. Okay, thank you so much. <clears throat> so um, I want to start with the first one really quick. So a lot of people know about cybersecurity, but the thing that comes to people's minds first when they hear about cybersecurity is hacking. You know, ethical hacking. That's the most popular one. But guys, there's a whole lot more. So that is called technically uh, penetration testing, where you basically go into your client site and you try to break into their infrastructure like a bad guy would in a way that shows them what a bad guy can exploit and then you are able to advise them on um, what to do to patch those loopholes. So that is one path and I know that that's the most popular part. However, there's another path around audit. So the guys who basically you, your organization needs to comply to a certain industry standard or needs to show that they are, they are handling data safely. So the people who basically come in and help those organizations or work with those organizations to, to get the standards, to get compliance on the standards and stay compliant, that's another track. So that's audit. So you also have the guys who work on intelligence. So they, they pull intel, so they, 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 they get to find out, okay, so what are the threats out there my organization is facing? How can we combat them? What are the things on the dark web that my organization needs to know about? Let's monitor what's happening. That's a path, that's threat intel as well. Um, there's also a path too for people who are sitting on the back end and making sure that they are testing, they are, they are putting in defense mechanisms to ensure that nobody is able to come into the network that is, that is, uh, that is malicious or is harmful. That's a path. There's another path for people who respond. So something bad has happened, yeah? This company has been hacked. Twitter has been hacked. So the people who come in and respond and get people and get the organization back on their feet that's the a different path that's incident response then there are guys also who come and say okay so let's answer the questions of how did these guys come in they have these guys themselves so that they can cover their path but we need to learn from this particular thing that's happened so that it doesn't happen again or maybe there's a dispute and you say ah you're the guys who this hack happened from no you're the guys who it happened from that is forensics so you see it's a whole it's it's a very big field it's a very big field and so, so one, one of the key things i want to say to anyone here who's interested in cyber security is expose yourself initially to everything so expose yourself in bits find what seeks you so i am a curious person and someone has dropped that in the comment box and i agree with you i have so much energy as well i, I saw someone say that so i believe you pick that up very easily so i'm an intel person straight up naturally because i'm curious so I, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely the person who finds stuff, 
who basically, you know, brings these reports seats. And I write really well. So I report and I, of course, put things together. And I'm able to I advise people. So there are different levels. There are different parts. And there are, because of the different parts, the different, um, sorry, there's also a network administrator part of things. So again, the, the places you can function at different levels of your career, at the time you're entering is also different. So you have to chart that course from, okay, where's the starting point? And then you can progress to maybe a more specialized role. And then also what what today, what what um what is skill for today and what is skill for tomorrow? And then you 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 basically map that point to map from today to tomorrow. Uh, but one key thing I also want to try out is please don't wait till you have it all figured out. It's important that you start dabbling. In doing is when you get better and more perfect. Uh, no, 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 not perfect. In doing is when you get better and then from better you get best, you know, because perfection is literally um is a journey, you know. So excellence is what you aim at, and then you should keep doing. And then in exposing yourself and in trying out things, you will find out what is your own. It will just tick. So don't be bothered if you're not able to find that thing now. It will come to you naturally later. Very quickly, I want to jump on misconceptions. So I initially thought, you know, um, to be cyber security, to be in tech, you have to look a certain way. You know, you have to be a particular way. In fact, I, I found that a lot of people thought I was a guy. In fact, a lot of people have always thought I was a guy many times via male. So I let, <laughs> so I let, <laughs> what happens is, I just let people call me Mr. Asa and I respond like nothing. And then the first thing we talk about the phone, person just look stupid. <laughs> like, ah, oh, but you respond, they say so. I was not supposed to say I'm not a guy. You just assume, did you ask? So, you know, so I, I, I found out as a pet peeve, so I just got in and let people do that. But I found that, you know, after some time, I, 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 I basically uh, found that people always put me in a particular mode. But remember that, um, remember that, remember that you're different you, we are all different for different reasons and that difference is your own personal brand and that personal brand is what sets you apart so if you're able to maximize what makes you different that is the reason god makes you different in the first place pick it up and run with it if the way you look is what makes you different the way you talk is what makes you different find the alignment between what makes you different to where you are what you want to achieve and max it milk it out so i say to people and i'm not going to be shy we're all women here I know that I'm very photogenic and I look good. You know what I do? I when I want something to spread on LinkedIn, I post my picture. It will spread. You see five K people. That is it. because I'm milking it. I know this. Are, this is my strength. Okay. You want to? You want me to talk in a room? I know that this is my. I will. You know. I will milk it. So find that thing that's different about. Imagine something that would have been something that pulled me away from tech, which is the way I look. You know, is actually the thing I'm using as my strength. The fact that I'm a woman now, which is a, a small percentage, is actually a strong point for me. So turn your disadvantages, find those things and align them. You'll find that once you're able to find that energy and confidence, like um, jo, uh, June has said, and then align them, trust me, there's your unstoppable, your unstoppable. So really quickly, let me move on to the next thing around being a mom. I'm a mom and a wife. And I'm sure um, Diwara can tell you, I'm very much a mom and a wife, let's put it that way. You have the conversation with me and I will keep saying my husband, my husband, my son, my son. So I'm very much a family-oriented person. But you know one thing I will tell all women here, it's very important you choose a career that you love. But trust me, who you marry is one of the biggest career decisions you will ever make. It's important that you marry somebody who first comes into your life when you have realized your path. You know this is where you're going. You know what you want. And then that alignment between them and yourself has to happen. So the person knows what they're getting into. And then you marry knowing that you have a, a path and a, path, a, a, a passion and a life to lead. Because you're much a person as your husband is, remember. So as much as you're helping him, he has to help you too. So fact, marry somebody who has that alignment is very important because there will be days when you can't cook. I can't tell you how many times my husband has gladly ordered food in. And it's not a problem because he knows what I'm working on. We have communicated about it. Do you understand? There are days when different things have to happen. There are lifestyle things that we need to do. For example, he, he drops off our son. You understand? It's not a big deal. It's something that happens because there is communication there's alignment so it's important that you really communicate if you're married if you're not yet married please know that who you marry is very important in your success and get help please there is no there is no there is no price for who suffers the most in this day and time as a wife or as a mom there is no there's no price get get as much help as you need in fact leverage 
family. You know, if you want to write an exam, I do it. I go and take my son. I built a very good bond with my mother-in-law. I go and drop him with his mother, with his, his grandmother, and I will enjoy good study time to myself. If I need to lock myself, up, I will lock myself, and I will soak myself in in what I'm studying. So it's important that you maximize the support and the help you get in your community. It is priceless when you're building a home. Um, so I I think also be very very clear about what you. Um, what you hope to achieve and communicate that to all the stakeholders in your life. In this case, your husband is a key stakeholder. Uh, I get quality help. That's a key point. So I, I have those three. I'm not just going to stop it because I know if I go on, <laughs> it's going to be long. <laughs> but a support system is one of your greatest gifts in the 21st century. And when you hear that uh, a, a village raises a child, there's a reason for that particular adage. Maximize that because as a woman, with all of the 21st century challenges, and if you live in Lagos, you know what this means. Sometimes you get home really tired and everything. Please, there is no certificate for who suffers the most. You all don't all of you more because you suffer more. Please, you know, you need to balance your life out and basically live on purpose. Thank you so much, Confidence. Very interesting insights across board. I mean, if there's one thing I'm taking away from here, pardon me, I mean, it's, there's no certificates for the person who suffers the most, right? I mean, it's just very exciting insight. Thank you so much, Confidence. And I'll just move really quickly to Jessica because I have just one last circle back to come to everyone. So uh, moving over to Jessica real quick is this, <clears throat> this terminology called machine learning, right? And data science. Because it's not something that a lot of people, or it's not a terminology that a lot of people are familiar with, right? They're like, oh, it's not like, a, you know those buzzwords, right? Everybody hears like machine learning, artificial intelligence, and uh, data science. And it sounds like something cool to say outside, like, oh, I'm learning AI, or oh, I'm learning ML. You know, so it would be nice. So it's sort of like a three prong question for you, or two prong question for you too. Is it would be nice to hear a bit on what is ML actually? What is machine learning? What is artificial intelligence? What is data science? What what they really do, right? And then what are the possibility of career paths like within this within data science, within machine learning, within our artificial intelligence? And lastly, will be how what are your tips around encouraging? As women in this are uh, in at uh, this event, right? We want to encourage other women who are just like us to participate or to partake in the technology ecosystem. Can you, do you have a few tips for us on how we can encourage women around us to also not be afraid and just to charge up? Okay, yeah. Thank you so much for that. You see me smiling because, man, I used to think that a lot. Um, when I hear machine learning, I hear artificial intelligence, it sounds like something that was beyond me. And now I write code, I play with machine learning algorithms a lot, and to me it's nothing. So um, honestly, um, one of the key things I found out early on when I started this journey was um, being able to find people that demystify stuff for you. So um, before, just like you said, people think it's something really big. You hear machine learning, you, think, you start thinking of robots, you start thinking of all these big things that maybe the Chinese people do and you feel like it's beyond you. Honestly, it is not. Um, so um, the last conference I had, I talked a lot about data science, trying to demystify it for people. And one comment I got was like, this was the simplest um, explanation I got in for data science. So when it comes to data science, I'll start with that because that, that kind of breaks down to the rest. So first of all, you have data. Data is basically um, numbers, images, text, just anything you can use to describe something. My dress is black and white, for instance. That's data, right? Um, so that's data, first of all. Then when you go to data science, it talks. It's, it's basically you collecting this data, trying to analyze it to see if you can get insights from it, and then you now putting it in a model so that you can predict something in the future. So I can use myself as an example. I'm wearing a black and white dress. For instance, maybe yesterday I wore a blue and black dress. Um, you can say, okay, based on Jessica's history of the kind of dresses she wears, I can use data science to predict what she's going to wear tomorrow based on the previous data I've collected. So that's a simple way I can explain it. Now, you come to machine learning. Uh, machine learning is you simply teaching a computer how to, identi how to identify patterns. So I have this ball in my hand. This is my stress ball. I love it a lot. So um, I tell a computer, um, this ball is round, for example. Um, Anytime you see a ball that is round or you see an image that has something looking like this, it is going to be, it, you're going to say, tell the person it's a ball. The next time I bring maybe a round object, I don't have any round, other round objects around me. Let's say I bring a football, for instance, at the bigger size. 
my algorithm has identified that oh this thing is round um so meaning oh it's likely going to be a ball so that's what machine learning does um you see from sometimes you go into google for instance you're trying to type something that thing blows my mind every time i'm trying to type what is and just before i'm done typing it google is already trying to complete it for me right that's data science at work because it is taking a lot of data from people that have asked similar questions and is able to already tell you um this is what i think um joy is going to ask this is what i think confidence is going to ask next so that's data science that works and when i see apply, when i see it in real life it blows my mind every time so then i didn't think so much about it. when i got into the field i started thinking oh so this is how they apply different things i can give more examples but i don't want to overshoot my time i think i did i did a presentation it's on my linkedin i posted it like two days ago um you can go there and check more about i tried to break it down to the simplest form um the video isn't out yet but i'll post it on my linkedin when it is um, the other question you asked is, what industries can you apply data analytics, data science to? Um, the answer to that is any industry at all, any industry. So when you, when you think about it, how do I explain it? You collect data in different industries. Care for Debt collects data, right? You collect data about women that come into your program. I go to a bank, for instance. Banks are big on data. They have everything about you, how much is in your account, whatever. Um, I go into an engineering firm. When I was in Nigeria, I worked with data a lot. So that was kind of what even prompted me to say, let me try this full time. Um, uh, thank you for that, uh, Monica. Um, so I, I um, basically, I can work in any firm. So at the moment, I'm trying to transition from full time consulting, freelance consulting um, to full time roles. I've done interviews with about, I did one yesterday with about maybe six, seven companies. And these, these companies are from different backgrounds. First, finance. Um, the one I had yesterday was in a bank, one of the biggest banks in Canada. Well, it's, it's a banking industry. They're looking for a data scientist. Um, and another, one I, another one I did was um, with with a marketing firm, something similar to what June does, a digital marketing firm. Um, another one I've done with an engineering firm. They work with palms and stuff like that. They're looking for a data analyst. I've done one with a law firm, one of the biggest law firms in North America. So um, honestly, any industry at all that data applies, and when you think of data, it's, it's everywhere, everywhere. So um, the opportunities are limitless. And I'm, I'm, I'm working on the website for data tech space. It's, I said it's going to be out on Monday, on, on Monday. I'm putting these things there, the statistics. For data analysts, the projections is every year, you have, no, by 2025, you're going to have a 16% increase in data analyst role. For data science is more because it's, it's an emerging field. You're going to have 35% increase by 2025, meaning that these roles are increasing every day. And there is no day I go on LinkedIn to check. I'm not out of even. I don't even bother applying for jobs because it's like jobs are coming to look for me now. Um, you go on LinkedIn, you type data sciences, data analysts. There are always jobs coming every day. So whoever wants to get into that field. I'm open for a conversation. Um, not so much. Um, I just anybody that comes to me, I just tell them go to data tech space and we we'll talk about that. So we talk about that a lot. Last thing we talked about tips. I have a lot of tips. So um, I might not go through everything, but from time to time on my Twitter, I'm a Twitter warrior. I tweet a lot. Um, for me, it's, it's I, I don't see anything wrong in sharing knowledge. These are things that work for me, and I feel anybody that wants to get into this space, they need to know that there is no miss to it. People feel like machine learning is for scientists or people that do phd my dear is not on linkedin i'm not trying to brag these are things that work for me so if you see that way then all the best um i see people with phds ceos coming to my linkedin to connect with me trying to ask me questions recently a man that's a manager that's how i got the role i i talked about i had an interview for that yesterday the guy's the manager in this bank um is a senior manager the head of their business analytics team it's some one of my projects that got a lot of accolades and some features somewhere and he was basically come to ask me how did i do it and from there we got talking and he was asking me oh if i was trying to interview for roles and that was how it got me referred to the data scientist role so um honestly right when i when i when you talk of tips first of all show yourself out there it, the first project might not be great just put yourself out there one thing people like is to see your journey to see how you've learned so far and how you've evolved that's also helped me a lot because, um, for instance, I play a lot with Tableau, I play a lot with Power BI, this BI tool, business, business intelligence tool. People see the first dashboard I built, they see the second one. My third dashboard I built got a feature called Viz of the Day. That's something very big in data analytics, if you know Tableau and all that a lot. Um, so basically, throw yourself out there. Um, what else do I have to say? LinkedIn, please, confidence has begged you, I'm begging you to, if you're thinking of a career in tech, I'm going to talk about this with my DTS community, data tech community on Saturday. 
LinkedIn should be your number. Forget your Twitter, finish me on that. That's where you connect to people. And one thing I did, one hack that worked for me is, so I transitioned from, I transitioned from engineering, right? So when I started putting out data projects, what I did was I took like a day, or it might not a whole day, like, like some time in a day, I went to connect with every data analyst to so data scientist. I was connecting everybody. Not everybody will respond, some people might not, it's fine. But I had that because one thing LinkedIn does is once you put out something, you put out a project, put out anything, once somebody likes that project or comments on it, the, every other person in that person's network will see your work, right? So it transcends beyond those in your connection. So that's one thing that's worked for me. So anytime I put out a project now, it's not just nothing less than 100, 200 likes. You see a lot of comments in it because it's not just my connections looking at it. It's people, you see the number of views, go there, you see it, it shows if it's 10,000 or. 20,000 views that you've seen in it. So put it out there. Twitter has also helped a lot. If you're into data science, Twitter should also be your focus because um, people that use Tableau, ML, there's a big ML community in, in, um, in, on Twitter. There's a big AI community on Twitter. There's a big Tableau community on Twitter. So use that a lot. What else do I have? Confidence. You see me speaking like this to people. The first time I spoke was in my SS3. I was head girl in Air Secondary School. I spoke Air Force way a lot. So in a, so I spoke with one of about 3,000 people to give my welcome speech. I was shaking. People were, when I got down from the stage, people were asking me, why are you shaking? Like they could see me. I was up there, but they could see me shaking. That was the first time I spoke. But over time, right, um, I have, I've, I've improved on that skill. So my periods of experiences, I always love them because they put me out there to speak in front of CEOs, to speak in front of managers, and I hone, hone that skill. So for me, when I come to talk now, I don't have to think twice. Like I don't have to even have to write a speech or whatever it, it, it's all there and it, it, it's even better when you think about something you're passionate about and for me i wrote it on my sister yesterday i said just give me data as a topic i can talk for hours if you don't stop me so for me find that thing you're passionate about if it's cyber security if you're starting your own company do it and don't look back don't there's there going to be a lot of noise there's going to be a lot of people telling you why are you bothering yourself i had that a lot a lot of friends i have to cut out that will tell me that because you can't come and spoil my I'm coming in on my parade and steal my joy. So um, you have to have that support system. Confidence mentioned it. You need that a lot. Whether your family, find a community that does what that's into what you're doing and join them. It really helps. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure if I've touched on everything, but I think I have. If you have more questions, shoot me, ask me on Twitter. I will answer you. Um, send me a LinkedIn message. I will direct you appropriately. So thank you very much. My name is Jessica again. Thank you so much, Jessica. Amazing nuggets, amazing information uh, for us. Uh, so quickly, is I would take just right after this, I just want to take three questions. One for Jessica, one for Confidence, one for June. So if you have any questions for Jessica, I might not be able to take all the questions because of time, but I mean, just put in your questions, we'll sort of like aggregate questions and share with them. And then I'll also come back to them on how, what best mediums it is that they would like you to reach out to them if, if they want to. So please, if you have any questions for Jessica, for June, for Confidence, please do put them in the chat section. Uh, also, the communications team has mentioned that if, if you want to tweet about this, you should uh, tweet with the hashtag women text us open day uh so that they're able to effectively retweet um what you're tweeting so uh final question right and i'll just start from jessica because she's she's like the last person who spoke it if you have one advice to give someone who is starting a career in tech a woman who is starting a career in tech, like i know that you have like five million <laughs> five million you know pieces of like whatever information but one advice right for a woman who is starting a career or business as it were in tech what would that be honestly uh well that's a very hard question to be honest because there's a lot but um i think for me the one the thing i've seen that has propelled me a lot is showcasing your work um yeah it, that that's the one i would give um we've talked about it a lot but i'll just speak more on it and i'll tell you how it has helped me so because I have a an engineering background, something that isn't pure data science, um, I knew right from time that if I wanted to get into that space and say I want to do consulting um, or I want to get a job, I needed to have something that differentiates me from the crowd. So I going into an interview with 20 other people, what's going to make Jessica look unique? So, um, and one thing that did that was showcasing my projects. Um, so, um, 
I, I told you I put out projects um, the first time I probably didn't spread it out a lot but the second one I made sure everywhere it was there and as soon as I was done with that second one it hit me that um, or not even before I did the second one or while I was trying to publicize that one because I loved that project a lot I, I had built my website um, I, I'm, I'm not a web developer don't get me wrong yeah website builders you can use put yourself out there so when you go to my website for instance um, you see you see some um, a Jessica, this is Jessica, data scientist or whatever. You see my project. You see my code. Um, I like to code a lot. You see other things about me. You see some tips. I will put some resources there for people that have asked me about getting into data science or data analytics. So you see all that there. So for me and <laughs> and then on my resume or on my LinkedIn, the website even on my on my banner on LinkedIn, you see my website there. So the first thing they're going on LinkedIn is like, oh, she already has a website, and that's really cool because it's like maybe only companies people feel only companies should have website. That's not true. You can have your own personal website as a person. So for me, that has really helped. So even when I go into interviews, I meet clients. Um, the first thing they're telling me, oh, I, I went I went to your website, the cool website. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. And for me, it always gives me that boost. And so I know I don't have to talk from. I don't have to talk from scratch. You've seen what I do, so it's a matter of you saying, "Oh, um, how much I get, to, how much I need to take for your work, or um, do you want the job?" So showcasing yourself helps a lot. Um, you can have websites. You can have. You don't have to go as far as doing a website. Just have something. So even on my profile, you see like a link tree account. So that where it has links to because I, I do a lot of things. So I have. To, I can't just put my website. I, I put a link to different things. So that's really helped. That's the one advice I would give, honestly, and that's really helped me a lot of things for me. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jessica. I mean, I see like several comments around what's the name of your website, what's your LinkedIn profile, what's your Twitter account. And um, people just want to connect with you because they are excited about what you shared with them today. Um, and I would really appreciate, I mean, whatever medium you feel is most convenient for you. To, for them to reach out to you, you can please just put it in the chat section so that they can just communicate directly with you um, as regards that. Thank you very much, Jessica. Confident. Oh, confident. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm muted now. Yeah. Hi, Dimura. <laughs> so you, you're asking what's the one advice I'll give someone, um, a woman going to tech today? Yeah. Okay, I'll say first things is that you can do whatever you set your mind to do. Remember that you can do it. So tech is not out of reach for you. The people that are green, they don't have 10 heads. The guys that are green, they don't have 10 heads. In fact, you're more brilliant than the average guy. Just set your mind to do it and be squared about doing it. You will find ways that work, that that thing works for you. You will find purpose in the thing that you know you'd like to do. And then you will find ways and you will find um, you will find better understand, understanding in continuous uh, immersion in that particular thing. It's also very important. I know this is one, but this is very important to 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 find communities that give you the support. So you're trying to go into data analytics. There should be a data analytics support group for women. Those groups are amazing. Find them on LinkedIn. Uh, drag Jessica's dress on LinkedIn to connect you. There, they'll be sharing resources on those places. There might be mentorship opportunities. Uh, there will be things that will come up to help you grow. So I would say community and of course um, the fact that you can do this because when you know you can do it, you will go. You go at the knowledge. You'll be you'll be hungry about the knowledge. You'll go for it, like you know you're going to succeed because you're going to succeed. So please know that you can do this. It's not above your brain power uh, at all is something you can achieve you want to boost cyber security into data analytics you want to own your own tech company you can do whatever you set your mind to do thank you so thank you very much confidence i mean see people are asking already twitter and uh cyber safe foundation and people just want to know so much about you and they just want to connect with you so please help share within the chat section the best possible ways that people could learn about what it is that you do and they're able to also connect with you as well thank you confidence uh june hi june uh okay june is on mute uh host please can you help us on mute june? okay fantastic okay i'm answering the same question yes okay so for me, what I strongly believe is 
if you if you want to get into tech as because I'm giving an experience as a tech founder as a founder of a business I believe that you need to ensure that your product fits the market especially right now our strategy as a business is changing we are becoming more of a tech uh, a tech company such that you have different uh, Bellas group is a group that houses different tech comp- tech companies so it's a holding group and what I've learned through it is when you when you're setting a product you need to be able to validate it to the market because for 2% of of tech companies fail 42 that's a very huge number 42% of tech companies fail because their product don't fit the, it doesn't fit the market so you really need to ensure that your product actually fits the market that you want to get into network 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 we've reached up a point as a digital marketing business and app creation business our web business that we don't look for clients literally guys come to us clients come to us even huge clients come to us so you really need to network get out there put yourself out there talk to people because when people hold your hand then it's easier for you to you know to get into spaces that you otherwise not get into and that's very key because especially when you're in tech you can capitalize on very very different fields on branding just like Jessica and Confident said put yourself out there on LinkedIn put your business out there because that's how people find you for us to reach a point where we don't need to look for clients or a, pl- a point where clients actually come to us it's because the products that we give out to people the work that we've given out to the people that we've worked with over the years which is more than 200 brands is simply because we gave out good a uh, good products and these people created an effect such as they kept on referring us to other people more and more and we got into a space such that we don't actually need to look for business the business is coming to us so network speak to people in your field speak to people decision makers especially and how do you meet decision makers you don't meet decision makers in in, in your living room you don't meet decision makers when you just sit in your office you need to get out there and talk to people that's the only way you get to to do it and talking to decision makers that the space is where they are at which is high level event which is you know spaces where you can actually meet them not because you may think that you're actually speaking to someone who will help in a particular company or give you business but not, they're not the ones so you need to speak to people who if if it's the market if it's the sales person in that company speak to, if it's a sales manager speak to them tell them what you're doing but get into a space where you're able to meet these people effortlessly so as a tech business just expose yourself Thank you so much June. I mean, uh there are people also in the audience who want to know uh how easy it is to reach out to you. Uh so um your website, your personal website, your social media and uh if you could please put them in the chat section so that people can easily access them uh and they could easily reach out to you. Uh the comms team is giving me a prompt that uh we've run out of time so I might not be able to take any questions because there are like tons of questions I'm just looking at them all in the chat section. I don't even know where to start from. But I mean, uh Jessica has shared our, our details, confidence is also shared our details I can see here. June will be sharing our details very shortly uh with everyone just so that you can connect with them whatever questions you have uh as regards their their um line of um of our uh, their career path they'll be able to share that with you uh so uh i want to say a big thank you to everyone for being a part of this uh panel session very exciting times i'm sure that everybody on this on this uh on this call today or this session today has learned so much and um we really really appreciate you guys taking time out of your very busy schedules to share out of your wealth of uh, knowledge and experience with the women here today so thank you very much june thank you very much confidence and thank you very much jessica uh we're we're super grateful to have you uh here with us today thank you Uh so real quickly is we still have a couple of things coming right up and I'll just be handing over to Joy real quickly where she'll be talking about uh we've seen a lot of questions come up about uh I mean this particular industry I want to switch or these are my interests I want to switch out right go about it that for them just offer some level of career advisory services and I'm sure that Joy will touch a bit on that and also touch a bit on the programs that we have in place in the course of the year for the women who are interested in actually 
pursuing a career or a business in technology. So we're talking about our boot camps and fellowships. Also coming right up is we're going to be showing uh, the we're going to be showing a story of one of our alumni, uh, women who went through our program and who is now uh, a full time uh, engineer at Tech Expert, the multinational organization. We're going to show our story just right up. And then lastly, we're going to take our uh, one of our women Texas alumni to share our experience around how she went through from zero knowledge right to getting a full-time job within the tech ecosystem just to encourage other women out there that if you're second guessing yourself i mean there's been a lot of conversations around uh i mean people mentioning i know that um jessica mentioning showcasing your work is important i know that confidence mentioned that you can do it just set your mind on it and lastly uh june mentioned about the power of networking so we're going to be sharing some of these nuggets with you just coming right shortly and we just thank you guys for staying with us and just learning more about pursuing a career in technology so thank you very much and over to you joy hi joy thank you very much Dura. Uh, hi Dura, can you hear me yes i can Okay, thank you very much and to the women uh, in your panel, thank you very much. It was really an interesting session and I didn't want it to end. So now we've seen a video by um, of Fatima Ahmed. She's one of the beneficiary of the Women Texas Initiative. She went to our boot camp and today is a technical support engineer at Tech Expert. After the video, we'll be having a little chat with another alumni of ours. Her name is Esther Oyemade and she's working, she's currently working as a software developer at Tech Savvy and she also does a little bit of their content at Tech Savvy. So let's see Fatima's video, then we'll have the talk with um, Esther. My name is Fatima Ahmed. I'm from Ilarin Kora State. I studied chemistry from the University of Ilarin, but now I'm a woman in tech. Getting a job in Nigeria is very difficult. After my national youth service program, I was at home for like five to six months, writing CVs, applying for jobs, and the highest I got was callbacks, which was very frustrating. I was talking to a friend about the difficulties of getting a job in Nigeria, and he was telling me about the opportunities in tech. Coincidentally, at that time, another friend of mine was telling me about how she went to the Nigerian Met Textiles program, where she learned how to code and build websites. Seeing what she could do, I was motivated to apply for the Nigerian Met Textiles program. The training was for 12 weeks. I learned technical skills, and building websites, writing codes. I also learned soft skills, communicating effectively, working in teams. It made me more effective in what I do today. Coming for the training, I just felt that, okay, I'll just learn some new skills, then have to go back home to apply for other jobs. But during the training, I started getting a lot of job opportunities. And here I am today, I have a good job and I am glad I took the full step to come for the Nigerian and Texas training. I currently work as a technical support engineer at Tech Experts where I provide cloud-based solutions. I want to use this opportunity to encourage other young women out there who are looking for jobs to empower themselves with tech skills and take advantage of opportunities like this. With partners like Microsoft, we've been able to train over 2,475 women in coding and deep tech skills across 12 states in Nigeria. And all this training was done for free. Over the next 10 years, we will train 5 million women across Africa by 2030. And we're looking for partners who could join us on this journey. Okay, so that was the story of Fatima Ahmed. And Today, we'll be having Esther Oyemade join us. Esther, are you there? She's also a beneficiary of the Women Texas Bootcamp, and I am also a beneficiary of the Women Texas Bootcamp. I was part of the first people that were trained under the Women Texas Initiative, and my story is 
peculiar story of almost everybody here that I, I, I'm not, I didn't have a background in tech. I studied physics in my first degree and looking for a job landed me here at, um, you know, I saw an opportunity online. I saw the Women's Access program at first and I applied for it and then I went through the program just like Esther. Hi Esther, nice to have you here. Okay, please unmute yourself. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, good evening, Esther. Thank you for joining us. How are you today? Thank you. I'm doing well. Okay, so I was just talking about my story, how I got into um, the Tech for Deaf Bootcamp. Let's hear you. How did you find yourself where you are now and how did you get to Tech Savvy? Okay, thank you very much, Joy. First of all, okay, I am Oyemade Esther. I finished from the University of Benin, where I studied environmental biology. I went ahead to do my master's program in parasitology. So while I finished the program, a friend of mine told me about the Nigerian Women Textiles program. So, and encouraged me to apply. Uh, so fine, I gave it a try. So I went into the training. Um, before doing the training, I had no knowledge, no uh, no knowledge about programming. But I just took up the challenge because I wanted to solve um, problems. I always had a desire to solve problems in the education sector through tech. So I took up the challenge and I went for the training. And the training was it was wonderful. It was exciting. So um, after the training, we are giving opportunities to. Um, intern in different in organizations. So I got an opportunity to intern with Tech Savvy. That's how I found myself working with Tech Savvy today. So, um, so between learning within a tech community like you did and for someone that is self-taught, which would you advise me? Because, you know, I've been looking at the comment section, people have been saying, oh, I've been learning on my own and all that. So for you that have passed through the tech community, training or the tech community, what difference um, has that made for you? Do you think you would have gotten the opportunity you got today on your own? Okay, um, learning, with, I would say learning the, within the tech community is the best because um, you get to um, interact and um, share with like-minded people and also you'll be able to uh, when you get stuck with technical issues you have people around to assist you to help you out so um, it, it's much better learning in the tech community i and also you 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 learn a lot you learn a lot hearing these speakers today speak in fact I'm so encouraged to so um, it's, it's better you um, learn within the tech community okay so I, I know I passed through the bootcamp program too but for the benefit of those that are here and they don't really know about the activities that were that you passed through during the bootcamp. Can you just just quickly summarize what and what did you have to do? At what stage did you do what? At what stage did you get an internship opportunity? And then how did you land your job? Okay. Um, during the and during the Nigerian Women Textiles Program, we were able to learn web technologies such as um, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, but those were just basic. So um, this internship that came in for me, you know, it opened, I was able to deepen my learning in tech because I was able to work with other guys on the team and learn more things from them. So um, it, it, um, apart from that, we were also able to learn soft skills such as communicating effectively and working in a team. So those were the benefits, those are the things I actually got. So coming into tech savvy, I, it was it was um, I was able to um, acquire more 
and because um, the, the, the boot, the, the training, the NWWT training had already um, started a, found, um, a basic foundation with us. And so the internship program just helped us to go more deeper into what the training had already done. So um, that was how I, I, and I was willing to learn. I was willing to learn and that was how I was able to be, be able to take up a full-time position with them. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I wanted to ask you because I, I don't want people to feel as though after the internship, like there's a job waiting for them. Because I wanted to know, because were you the only one, um, first of all, were you the only one posted to tech savvy? And if not, what extra things did you do to help you get a job there? Was it automatic for you or were you just preferred? Okay, uh, I wasn't the only one posted to tech savvy. We had other interns that had they were, they were also posted, but it's not everyone that um, that got that got an internship position that was retained after the internship. So the first thing first is um, taking up challenges. As uh, confidence had uh, briefed us, you need to take up challenges. So I worked on mini projects with the team. I helped them with um, the con their content in the their web in their websites, and so they saw the passion that I was willing to push in my best in it. So they decided to to retain me. So um, first first of all, you need to take up challenges. So if you shy away from challenges, you won't go anywhere. So I I okay I felt some people just felt I, I can't do it I can't do it mentality, and so when they when they saw that they may not the company may not be able to keep such such people around but when they see that when people see your determination to learn and to take up new challenges they will, they will get interested in you so that's what just pushed me out there and also um um as i i think um one of the speakers said something about pushing yourself out there and um, so those mini projects that i i was doing so i i tried to Push myself. Though I was okay, the first job I did, I felt I was not confident about it, but I just took it up, and fine. The client was satisfied with it. So if I had sat down in my corner and said, with "What I know, I may not be able to do much," you, I won't go far. So no matter how small anything you are doing, any project you are doing, push yourself out there, so more opportunities can come. Yeah, thank you very much because, you know, why I asked that question is because we have many people that have applied. The um, applications for our fellowship program are already, you know, are out already and we're already are currently screening applicants, you know, so, and many people are optimistic to join the program you, you get. So, we, yeah. I, um, what advice do you have for those that would like to join the Women Texas training activity? Is it what it, do you think it's what it? And what okay. do we have to do to stay in the program and land a job at the end of the day? Okay, um, I would say it's worth it because considering my career, it's also an considering what I wanted to do initially, it's also an additional skill for me that I gained during the program. And I I would say um first of all you will definitely, you know, what people, most people were running away from were the challenges. Especially when we started the code, the, um, the coding, um, trying to code, and you run into bugs, you run into issues, and you may even take three days, one week, trying to solve the problem, and most people shied away from it. So the thing is, um, um, put your, no matter what you face after the training, the challenges that will come out of it. You need to push yourself, keep on pushing yourself, and um, it's worth it also because um, you'll be able to build what you are passionate about. Like me, I'm able to, I, I, I can build whatever I, whatever I want to imagine, I can build it. So you'll be able to build what you are passionate about, about. and so that's what I can say. Just um, push yourself out there, and um, no matter the challenges that come up, um, just tell yourself that you can do it because we women we can do a lot but because we do not yeah. we, we, we do not um we do not explore so we, we we miss out of opportunities thank you 
thank you very much esther for seizing the opportunity that you got and for making us proud because um people like you are our products, our, our, our testimonies, our testimonials that we have to show that the Women Textiles Initiative is actually doing, is actually achieving its goal, and we're grateful that you are still the woman in tech, and you're pushing, you know, you're pushing frontiers, you're breaking new grounds every day. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was nice having you, Esther. I would have loved to talk more and more, but for time. Would um, have to end this session and then talk about the program activities for the year. Thank you, Esther. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, every other person on this call. Thank you for staying up all to this moment. This is the most important part of this program because I know um, most of you have been waiting to hear the announcements to hear okay oh let me get to know about the mental exercise initiative what activities can i participate in i know some of you are hearing about the fellowship for the first time on this call and you don't know how to even join any of these program activities so for the mental exercise initiative if you join earlier you have heard me here and speak about the plan to train ten thousand women this year and we are piloting in five countries who are piloting in Nigeria, um, we're piloting in um, Ghana, Kenya, Egypt, South Africa, and we are also having implementing the Women's Initiative in Nigeria again. We've been doing this in Nigeria over the past two years, and Fatima Ahmed, Esther Oyemade and myself are all beneficiaries of the Nigeria Women Textiles Initiative. So for the year 2021, we want to empower 10,000 women with technical skills. If you were here during the fireside chats, you would have heard the guest speakers say that um, being a woman in tech doesn't have, you don't have to have any background experience to be a woman in tech. Everybody can, every woman can actually you know, start careers in tech, and you mustn't, you mustn't have studied um, computer science or engineering to be a woman in tech. You know, so the open day event is where you learn about the different tracks you can explore. Sorry for those that many we had people that um, applied for this open day event and they couldn't join this Zoom call. I know many of you are watching us on Facebook Live right now. It's because the capacity was filled up. So, but we have other open days events. It's a monthly event. So, if you miss this month, please tell your sister, speak to your daughter, speak to your your friends to join the next open day event for next month. We have other guest speakers, other women in tech, come to speak about their own personal stories and tell you about the different, you know, tech, the different opportunities in tech and make sure you attend the next open day for more information. Because um, some of us do not know whether or, or how to go about it. And we all know that there are other opportunities outside the core tech space. You don't actually have to code to be a woman in tech. And there are also, um, we also have the master classes. Master classes, the first one is going to start in March. We'll have five master classes this year. And during the master class, we'll have a, a professional come to speak about a certain topic that she's very skilled in. And for a day or two, just take a deep dive into a certain topic that will be taught during our programs, during the boot camps and the, and the fellowship program. You know, so that it's really, and it's very important for people that are considering to go into tech, start careers in tech, or women that are already in tech, but you want more information about a certain topic. I've heard people speak about, um, um, say that they are actually women in tech already but they don't know how to go about this they need so we have we would have speakers women in tech like the likes of jessica like confidence in the cyber security space like jim Sewa, to come to speak about certain topics in tech during the master class and then we have the boot camp so the open their master classes are virtual events yes for the questions the classes are, are online the boot camp is a four-week intensive training that will take you from a novice to uh, an, an intermediate tech enthusiast. So you don't really have to have an experience or you, you mustn't even um, know anything about tech. Just come with your interest and then, you know, you you, you could join the boot camp. Then there's the fellowship. The fellowship is a year-long coding program and it's been repeated over a timeline across four different, five different learning tracks. 
the learning tracks for this year at this for the fellowship are same as that for the boot camp you can either decide to um learn product design product management and data science and artificial intelligence engineering cyber security or software development there are five different learning tracks and for more information you you can visit the um, website www.tuentextas.org for more information So for more information about the program activities, please visit the website. The applications for the fellowship is already ongoing and the bootcamp, the application for the bootcamp is coming up next year. So other related activities for this year would be soft skills training. And um, in case you don't even know where you fit in and all that has been spoken about today, um, you don't know how to even go about you're hearing about this tech thing for the first time, you can send us an email, um, send an email to women texters at techfordev.com and we will book a career session with our career advisor for you to help you, you know, to provide you the support and the necessary guidance you need um, to guide your applications. So um, shortly we'll be having, um, let me see, Aro Shafer to um, make the announcements. But I think I have some questions on the chat box. Um, let me quickly answer them. The bootcamp is starting next month. Applications for the bootcamp is starting next month. The bootcamp is starting in April. The first bootcamp is starting in April. Classes are online. And yes, please, I forget everything. The open days, the master classes, the fellowship, and the bootcamps are all free. Are totally free of charge. You don't need to pay any money to learn tech. Tech for Dev is making this free for you, you know, to learn. So the programs are starting. The 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 yeah wow all free yes all free. So the fellowship is starting um, next month. And for those who have applied, please be patient. We are screening. We are screening um the applications. And well, we also need more people in Egypt. We already, we already met our quota in Nigeria and other African countries. But if you have people in Egypt, the numbers in Egypt are, are quite low. We need more people in Egypt. As I said, for this year, we're venturing into five countries. The Domain Textiles Initiative for this year, the trainings are open to women that are in Ghana, Egypt, Kenya, South Africa, and Nigeria. So if in case you know someone that is in Egypt and you want a person to be a part of our training, please help spread the news. Inform people in case you want them to also join us um, the open day event for next month. We'll be posting all these things, all this information on our social media handle. Please endeavor to follow us on social media. So um yeah, MC Arosha Fair will be giving the announcement and she will give you more information on how to contact. Thank you. Let me see over to you. Um, thank you everybody for joining us today. This has been an explosive session. I hope that you guys have learned a lot. It has been rewarding for me. I hope that's been rewarding for you as well. Um, so just a few um, things to retreat. So there's a poll going on right now. So we just want to get your feedback on how this session has been. So take the poll before you um, leave the session so you see a pop-up and then you can answer the questions that come up um, so um, as Joy has said the fellowship call for applications for the fellowship is ongoing at the moment we are at capacity I'm going to use that word for applications from Nigeria so we need more applications from um, women in Egypt so if you know you can share across your communities so that more women from Egypt, um, South Africa also can apply. So I'm going to paste our social media handles in the chat. So you can follow us on social media if you need, if you have any questions or you need further clarifications, you can send us a message to our DM on social media. The link to also apply for the fellowship, if you haven't done that, is also in the chat. So on Facebook, we are Tech for Dev. On Twitter, we are Tech for Dev HQ. And on Instagram, we are at Tech for Dev. 
so I'm um, just going to give us a few minutes to quickly um, take the poll. If you if you are done taking the poll, just type yes in the in the chat section so I know. Okay, okay, okay. So I can see responses. So I'm just going to give us a few minutes before I close the poll. So if you have not taken the poll yet, please do so. Um, we're going to be answering. So I can see a lot of a lot of questions in the chat about the difference between the fellowship and the boot camp and other um, questions that I'm seeing in the chat. So we're going to put together um, like a frequently asked questions where we're going to answer all of these questions and then we'll put them out on social media and send to your emails as well. Emails you registered for this session with. So we'll answer all your questions, don't worry. The rest are short, we'll answer your questions. So I'm going to paste the link to our social media um, handles again and an email to reach us if you have any other questions.